Hi everyone, welcome to Values. So today we're going to look at Faraday Future. This is an electric car company looking to come public off a SPAC merger. And that SPAC merger is going to have a valuation of about $3.4 billion. The SPAC it is merging with is called Property Solution Acquisition Corp. And it currently has a valuation um, of about $6.2 billion for that merger based on this $18.45 price tag given the base is around ten dollars and yeah like at 6.2 billion dollars the big question is is a company like faraday future worth the current pricing we're going to dive into details and hopefully we get an answer at the end of this all right so faraday future is looking to um have a production car out by the next 12 months once they merge and get it gets funding um they're hoping to produce this car called the ff91 and as you can kind of see, it's kind of a very, you know, high tech kind of look. Um, but the interior kind of signals like a very luxurious type of look. So it's like the blend between high tech and luxury. Um, but of course you'd be the judge. I'll, you know, cars, the look and feel of a car is very subjective. Some people like it, some people don't like it. Um, at the end of the day, I guess the consumer is the one that matters most and here is about 14,000 reservations for this car here so we're just gonna have to sit, trust the consumer that they know what they want and um, this potentially could be a popular car but the pricing of it is, it is very very high so uh, if we jump here first um, that pricing for the F F91 Futurist has a pricing of 180,000 which is exorbitant um, but I, they may be able to justify why. Um, their comparison is with the Bentley, Lamborghini, and Ferrari. So any comparison with those luxury cars uh, really says you're offering a lot in terms of, um, yeah, technology, uh, luxury, luxury. Um, but of course, in the in quarter four, twenty twenty two, uh, they're also offering. Uh, FF91, which is, um, uh, I guess, a more simplified version of this car, and is more comparison, yeah, kind of the comparison's more similar to the Porsche Taycan, or the Audi E8, or the BMW 7 Series, or the Lucid Air. Um, so yeah, like eventually they hope to just go along along this line, and every year release a new vehicle because 2022 is for the f911 um and in, in 2023 they want to uh, release the f f81 which starts at a ninety-five thousand dollars price tag for the futurists they always start with the more pricier car first and then as they go they get to cheaper models and they hope to get to a fifty nine thousand dollar model uh, which really brings the price down by quite a bit from their first car when it was at when they're looking at asking for about 180,000 um, and in near the end in 2024 they hope to start offering a car for $65,000 and eventually getting down to as low as $45,000 so in a sense that in the next four years they hope to get to where Tesla is now um, because their comparison is by the time they get to the F F71 um, that compar that com car is comparative to Tesla Model 3. So yeah, like in a way, they are moving very quick. They're, at least that's what their plan is. And of course, there is always going to be delays. So hence why these dates could be like out by more than a year as well. Um, but of course, when you do a presentation, uh, everything always has to sound good, of course, to entice investors. Um, and yeah, like this is, it looks interesting of course but of course we have to uh, track this company over time and really go are they delivering on their milestones um, so in terms of uh, this merger um, it's going to happen around quarter two 2021 um, and they're hoping once it happens they can get funding for this car um, and start building everything out and they hope that by 2024 that they do about 10.5 billion dollars in revenue and 
that merger is going to result in this company getting $748 million in cash. Um, yeah, which builds their FF91, and ho- and I guess their aim is the FF91 is going to help fund the FF81. Though I guess they're also going to be raising m- money on the public markets as well. So in terms of projections, how they get to their $10.5 billion by 2024, um, so when they first start production of the FF91, they hope to do about 2,400 in 2022, um, and in, yeah, they are planning a massive jump in 2023 by doing about 38,000 vehicles, which is quite a lot of vehicles, um, especially and if the prior year you were doing 2.2 uh, two, about 2,400 vehicles. And I hope to do another massive jump in 2024 by going over 100,000 vehicles. And in 2025, they hope to do about 266,000 vehicles. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see like there's massive jumps. At least that's what they're predicting anyway. Um, and the big question is, can they do it? Um, so yeah, I think there's a slide here in terms of their manufacturing. So their aim is that they're going to have a production factory that they're going to build themselves that they can do about 10,000 vehicles and then they've also got some um, a manufacturer that they've contracted with that hopefully that company that contractor can do about 270,000 vehicles Um, so yeah like I guess in in a sense their own factory is to produce the FF91 and the contractor in South Korea is going to produce the FF81 um, and yeah like that gives them a really good way to scale up and also they're working with a company called Geely who is a Chinese uh, car manufacturer and they're doing a joint venture to build a manufacturing facility in China as well which could have a uh, production uh, capacity of up to 150,000 vehicles by 2026 and Geely is fairly big in China, having sold 2 million vehicles in 2019. So the fact that like a company like Geely is backing them is like a really, really good sign um, that, you know, they believe Faraday Future is heading in the right direction, uh, heading in the right market, uh, and Geely wants a piece of that. So the equivalent is like GM taking stakes in other EV companies. So G, uh, Geely taking a stake in Faraday Future is also a very similar type play. And also, I guess, Geely is solely based in China. Um, so that's why they probably want to expand into the international markets. And that's why they're kind of using uh, Faraday Future to also be like a proxy for them expanding overseas. Um, so yeah, like it, it kind of works for both companies. But I think it really builds more credibility in Faraday Future, particularly since it's a company that's been plagued with many problems in the past, particularly financial ones. And now, yeah, like to see a company come in and back it and be like a cornerstone backer, I think it really brings a lot of confidence um, in terms of that the legitimacy of this company to be able to start to actually produce a car and scale up their production. And if they run into problems, I guess you've, it's always nice to have like a company like Geely that could potentially help them out. Um, so in terms of this partnership, Faraday Future is going to uh, contribute the brand and IP in China. Uh, and then Geely is going to be on the manufacturing side. Uh, they're looking at a, at a tier one Chinese city to con- contribute industrial land of about 330 acres. So yeah, like it's going to be a big, big project. So they've got three areas of manufacturing that they're looking at. They're looking at building in the US for 10,000 vehicle capacity, in South Korea for 270,000 vehicle capacity, and then uh, in China for about 150,000 vehicle capacity. So by the time we add all that up, we're looking at about 430,000 vehicle capacity by the end of 2026 which will be uh yeah like pretty good for this car company um so yeah by by then if they can manage to execute on every key milestone uh i think this company is going to do really well uh in terms of uh, a comparison with the ff91 
Uh, in terms of horsepower, it ranks as one of the, uh, I guess, one of the best. Like, I think Lucid Ear uh, Dream Ear Edition had, uh, has like 1080, so just marginally better anyway. Uh, and in terms of like um, going from 0 to 60, uh, very like a good comparison with the Model S. Um, them getting about 2.4 seconds while the Model S is 2.3 seconds. Um, and in terms of range, 378 miles um, compared to 402 miles by Tesla. Uh, Model S and charge time, 25 minutes compared to Tesla's Model S of 24 minutes. So yeah, you can kind of see like they they are really, really, really um, are close to Tesla and when it comes to like uh stats of their vehicles uh which is kind of uh reassuring because this is not a cheap vehicle so you hope there's something that stands out in terms of what stands out for the ff91 it would just be the horsepower uh that just has more horsepower than tesla race uh, model s um yeah so apart from that like you're um paying a, a, about a hundred thousand for this ff91 um I don't think it's a Futurist Ed Edition, um, so like I'm imagining it's the FF91 that does talking about, not this futuristic version, uh, which is at 180,000. So I, I, yeah, like they're gonna really have to justify a lot at that price tag. Um, but yeah, it certainly is interesting. So I think what um, kind of makes me more comfortable is that hey the partnered up with a company called Geely um, and I've got these manufacturing facilities set up they're going to get about 748 million dollars which is going to which they expect to actually get them to the end of their production uh, for the 991 I think there were numbers uh, that were tossed around um, that I yeah there we go. So these are the numbers that they think will get them into production. So apparently they only need about three hundred and seventy-seven million dollars to get into production. So yeah, like uh, a lot less than the seven hundred and forty-eight million that they're getting. So if, even if they run over budget, um, they still have more than enough money. So I guess that's always the good thing. Um, and they're looking to spend about nineteen million dollars. To build out this factory that can produce about ten thousand vehicles, so in a, in a sense, like they're kind of building out, so they do have enough money that they're committing about less than five hundred million um, to build their f uh, facilities and then get the car into the production. So in a way, they have enough finances. Um, they've got a good partner. Um, the question is. Can they get their, can they scale their vehicle when it comes to manufacturing? Uh, that would be one of the key questions. Um, but I do like what I see in terms of where they're at. So like 14,000 uh, reserves um, and about a 6.2 billion valuation at the current time. So I think, yeah, like in a, in a sense, I think the valuation justifies the present situation. Um, but I don't think you would want to buy any higher because yeah like it's say like in 12 months they get into production um then what's the valuation for that um but though mind you like people are valuing like lucid um at about a 30 to 40 billion dollars you know um so potentially if faraday future if they're very similar with lucid motors um then do they deserve a very similar comparison is 6.2 billion cheap in a sense compared to something like lucid motors um so i think that's a more bigger question to address but i think 6.2 billion valuation at this current situation is a, a very doable situation um it's it's worth buying some and holding for the long term like again i think it's it's good only good for the long term i don't think there's like a play where you buy for the short term and hope to do well I think you buy and hope by the time they get into production that they kind of justify things and then um, they get propelled into a higher valuation because they have higher um, reserves for their cars and I think that's what you're hoping with this company. 
uh, but if, if anything goes wrong and they have delays um, do expect the valuation to fall so you know it's it's kind of like the whole risk and reward approach which one where do we see things going but in the scheme of things 6.2 billion dollars for this company doesn't seem too bad um yeah i'd say there's it's kind of like the middle of the ground like it's not really expensive but it's not really cheap either um i expect yeah like this company could be worth about 10 billion dollars by the end of the year assuming everything goes to plan and they are very very close to production by the end of the year um and then by next year i guess that's when they can move into like that 15 to 20 billion uh kind of uh territory uh where they think they're going to produce about 2400 cars uh, with the expectation that the year after they're producing 38,000 vehicles so that's kind of where the you know where the, where the juicy part of this company is in 2023 when they can produce about tw- uh, 38,000 uh, vehicles by then um, by that year they're probably worth about 30 billion or more or even 50 billion 30 to 50 you know it's going to be a wide range because it depends uh, where this company is by then so i really like the long-term prospects of this company i think um it's definitely worth something like buying some and holding long uh that is if you if you like what you see in this presentation and you like this company um but i don't see the pricing really favoring a short-term hold um like if you try to buy and hold for the short term you may not win like that's just my view anyway uh, but of course, um, you know, do what you think is right for you. Obviously, this company has had a lot of problems in the past, and to say that it wouldn't have problems going forward um, it probably won't be true. Like, I expect them to probably have some issues as well going forward. They might not get to their um, production targets, who knows? Um, but I think at the 6.2. Um, it's worth buying some and holding it for the long term like this is one of the companies that is targeting a very luxurious high-tech category um, that only I guess something like Lucid Motors is very comparable um, because not a lot of car electric car companies are targeting this really really luxurious category which I think is you know the low hanging fruit in this category where everyone else is targeting uh, that low to middle and lucid year and this is also targeting to the higher end which kind of you know gives them um, a higher chance of success given that there's not many people targeting this area uh, but let me know what your thoughts are until then if you've got any questions or anything else just um, mention it on the comment section below until then uh thanks for tuning in um yeah i'll see you later and good luck investing everyone